Hey guys and welcome back to the Thumb Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be improving on the previous tutorial I did on dodging. So we've got a dodge animation. So I'm going to be making that a little bit better, a bit more efficient and just look a bit better as well. And then I'm also going to be showing you how to attach a particle spawner on the player while they're dodging and removing it afterwards as well. So in this example the particle I'm using doesn't look too great because I'm just using a free one in the start content. However the mechanic of it and the functionality of how it all works will work the exact same way whichever particle you're using. So you can obviously make this look a lot better very easily by just simply using a different particle system. But I'm just showing you how to actually set it up, how it works, how you do it for whichever system that you want to use. So I hit play, I'll show you what we've got. So like I say, we've got our normal movement, normal dodge. However, now if we dodge as well, we're gonna actually fly forwards a bit more. So previously it was just a dodge, just played the animation. This one is actually gonna launch the character in our dodge direction as well, which will work perfectly like so. As you can see, that's where we've got the particle spawner on the back as well. So like I say, with the sparks on the start content, it doesn't look too great. However, the functionality of having it attached to the player stay there, remove itself after a certain amount of time, still works perfectly as well. So you can change it to be whatever you like. For example, if I just change it to fire, you can see it looks a lot different, but it still works. So that doesn't look too great either. Unless of course you want something along these lines, but using your own particles will make this look a lot better. Again, I'm going through the functionality of it. So without further ado, this is what I'm going to be creating today. I'll start off with improving the dodge code itself. So if you're just here for that, then that's the first part. And I'll have timestamps in the video itself, so you can go to whichever part you want. But without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how we're going to do this. So what we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint, as that is where our dodge code is. So for me, that's content, third person in BP, blueprints, third person character, with views could be third, first, whatever you've named it. It's just where we have our rolling animation code. So I have mine off of the jump here. So it's in this macro named roll animation. So I'm going to open it up. And this is the code we've created previously. So like I say, I'm going to start off with just improving this code first. So what we want to do is we want to just drag the inputs out over here to just give us a bit more space at the start. I'm going to delete this variable actually. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable. So hit the plus variable here. I'm going to name this one is dodging. So we've got is dodging like so, and compile and leave it as false by default, as obviously by default we're not going to be dodging. So what I want to do is get this boolean here, so drag and drop get is dodging. Out of this I'm going to get a not boolean, so if we are not dodging, and that will go into a branch. So hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting the execution into the input there, a condition being that not boolean. So if we are not dodging, because if we're not dodging, we want to be able to dodge again. And if we are dodging, we don't want to do anything. So out of true, we want to dodge, false we don't want to dodge. So out of true, we're going to set is dodging to be true, because we are now dodging. And then we want to launch the character. And this is again, just to make it look a bit more realistic, so when you dodge, you're actually dodging more out of the way. So you still were out of the way in the previous tutorial, but again, this makes it better. So out of the set is dodging, we're going to launch character, which is a handy little function which already exists. I'm going to move this out a little bit more. And what we want to do is we want to decide the launch velocity, so the direction we want to be traveling in. So because we've got dodge for forward, backwards, left, right, and diagonal, we can't just use forward vector or right vector, we have to do it differently. So we're going to drag and drop and get the character movement from up the top left here. Out of this, we're going to get the velocity, and then this velocity here is the launch velocity, which works perfectly. So we just want to multiply this to make it a bit bigger, so we're going to get a vector multiplied by a float, and you can input any value in here, I'm going to set it to 20, connecting that into launch velocity. Again, set that value to whatever you want. That is just how far you're going to actually dodge. So again, 20 is good for me. You can have it as 10, 20, 30, whatever you like. And we don't want to take anything else in there. Just leave it as that. Then I'm going to connect this up straight away. I'm going to leave a gap there as we're going to come back here afterwards to do the emitter code. But like I say, I'm doing this part first. So at the very end of the code, we have our play animation montage here, which is what's actually playing the animation. I'm going to drag the outputs out a bit. Hold down D, left click to get a delay, with the duration being the return value and the execution going in there. So once the animation has finished playing, this delay will fire off. And then we're going to set is dodging back to false. So once we finish the animation, we've also finished dodging. And that will go into the outputs. And this just means we can only dodge once. So when we're already dodging, we can't restart it. And we're also going to launch the character as well. So this just works a lot better. So if I compile, hit place to test this, we'll show you what this looks like. So I'm dodging, you see we now dodge forward or backwards or whichever direction, but we actually launch the character a bit more as well. So it is an actual dodge. And if I spam it, we're not gonna be starting to dodge 
whenever we'd like halfway through one it will wait until we finished and this looks and works a lot better. This is a bit more of an efficient way of doing our dodge code which we set up previously. So now let's go on to spawning the emitter. Again very simple code however this does work great and you can obviously again make it look a lot better with whatever you choose to put in it. So we're going to come back to our launch character here in this macro and out of launch character we're going to get spawn emitter attached as we want to attach it to the player so it stays where we are. Obviously if you want it to just happen in the world and stay there just use spawn emitter at location and then get the world location of the player. But I want it to be attached and actually I will show you that version afterwards as well because you might want that. The emitter template is obviously what we want to have so I'm going to get sparks attached to the component is going to be the capsule component here so drag and drop that in like so. The location I'm going to have is minus 30 on the x, 0 on the y and 20 on the z and a simple way that I found to get that was just add component in the viewport and I added a particle system putting this as the particle which I want so for me that's going to be sparks and I just moved it into the location as well so I moved it to about here where I wanted it to be and rotated it as well which is also how you get the rotation so that's where I want it to spawn so that's what I've got it as so again you can just get the location up here and that's how I got those so again for me that's minus 30, 0, 20 the rotation was 180, 90 and 180 so sorry the x is 180 as well like so scale I'll leave as 1 and everything else I'll leave as default as well and now that's going to spawn the emitter however one thing this is going to do is that will just stay there so we've got auto destroy activated however this particular emitter doesn't destroy itself automatically anyway it just loops so what we want to do is give us a bit more space once again and then after this I'm going to hold down S left click to get a sequence connecting the execution in there then 0 goes into our dodge code then 1 will go into a delay so we can hold down D left click to get a delay but the duration is essentially how long the animation is so I found for me 0 0.8 was a good length but you can set that to be whatever you like custom for your own animations and then we'll come out the return value of the spawn emitter and get destroy component connecting that into the delay there and so that just means that the emitter will also be destroyed after we finished the roll as well which is perfect so now we compile save that's this method now working as well so if we dodge we're going to get the emitter spawning in the location we want it to be in and then it destroys afterwards as well so it's spawning on the back and sticking with the player attaching to us like so so that method now works as well of having an emitter or a trail or a vfx particle system anything that you want spawn and attach the player only for the duration of our dodge and again if you want it to end quicker just decrease this delay here so it gets destroyed quicker so now I've shown you how to improve the dodge add this particle attached to the player what I'll also do now is show you how to spawn a particle in the world so it doesn't attach the player it just stays where it is which you might want as well so what I'm going to do is delete the spawn emitter attached and all this code here what I'm going to do is come out of the launch character again and spawn emitter at location emitter template for this one I might have as explosion the location what I'm going to do is get the world location or sorry get actor location for our player get actor location there connecting that into the location rotation I'll leave as 0 0 scale as 1 1 1 and everything else the same as well and I believe the explosion does auto destroy as well so we don't need to do that delay destroy component code there however obviously if you're using something which doesn't get destroyed you will need to do that and I can just connect those up and you see that's also very very simple so if we compile play this should work as well so you can see we get in we dodge and there's an explosion spawns behind us from where we dodge from which works perfectly as well so wherever we're dodging from there is an explosion there like so so if you want to get a different look this is what it looks like so it kind of looks like the explosion is forcing the character out of the way and making them jump like so which i think looks quite cool the thing that'll be it for this video is you've done everything you want to do i've showed you how to improve the dodge and set up two different mechanics of spawning emitters when we're dodging either attached to the player or in the world location which again the functionality will work great and you can improve it a lot by just changing the emitter very simply like so so thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.